ओके सो आज का लेक्चर होगा ऑन लेवी एंड कलेक्शन ऑफ टैक्स पेज नंबर फोर्टी फाइव सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट लेवी वट फर्स्ट कम्स टू यू माइंड वट इज लेवी so levy is basically it is an imposition now can government uh, impose any tax just like that like uh, government feels let's impose this tax and it brings a notification and your tax imposed ho gaya can it do so no no it cannot now an authority of law is required for the imposition of any tax so it is only through any law that the government can impose a tax so first of all the government has to frame a law or you can say uh, it should be uh, the government should have to frame a draft or a bill it will introduce it into the parliament both houses of the parliament it should get ratified by both the houses of the parliament get the assent of the president become a law and then through that authority provided by that particular law which has been passed by both the houses of the parliament and assented by the president government can impose a tax so just on the basis of imsen fancies of the government it cannot issue i not cannot impose any tax <coughs> so jo upar mein thoda sa jagah hai title ke upar mein aap log likhiye article 265 आर्टिकल 265 तैयार रहना चाहिए नहीं ठीक है आर्टिकल 265 ऑफ़ ऑफ़ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इंडिया आर्टिकल 265 ऑफ़ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया मैंडेट्स 265 of the constitution mandates that no tax shall be levied mandates that no tax shall be levied or collected no tax shall be levied or collected except by the authority of law except by the authority of law so the provision constitution of india ka hai that the government cannot uh, impose or collect any tax except under the authority of law they accept by way of the provisions of the law the charging section <coughs> the charging section is a must the charging section is a must in any taxing statute tax charging section is a must in any uh, taxing statute in any taxing statute for levy and collection of tax taxing statute any law which gives the government a power to levy and impose tax so all statutes or all laws are not regarding imposition of taxes so there are many other laws in in case of any taxing statute there should be a charging section before imposing any tax before imposing any tax it must be shown it must be shown before imposing any tax it must be shown that the transaction falls that the transaction falls within the ambit of the taxable event that the transaction falls within the ambit of the taxable event so transaction should be within the tax covered by the taxable event and the person and 
and the person uh, on whom tax is imposed on the person on whom tax is imposed also is covered by the charging section person on whom tax is imposed gets covered by the charging section okay so in the gst act also section 9 is the charging section of the cgst act so what does this section 9 talks about section 9 says that in case of intrastate supplies uh, central goods and services tax intrastate supply central intrastate within the state central goods and services tax will be implied okay and the levy would be on goods and supplies or both if you are giving mixed supplies and goods and services can be either on goods or supplies or both also it talks about alcoholic liquors in which case it will GST act does not cover or GST cannot be imposed on alcoholic liquors for human consumptions also regarding supply of petroleum crudes high speed diesels motor spirits natural gas aviation turbine fuels like all petrol diesel tax they are included in GST but tax will be levied with the date with effect from the date which is notified by central government so difference between alcohols and petrol diesels and aviation turbine fuels and high speed diesels etc difference is that alcoholic liquor GST cannot be imposed but on petrol diesels aviation turbine fuels etc GST can be imposed but GST will be levied but it will be levied when when a notification with regard to this is imposed by the central government till now the notification has not been given and still it's under the state powers petrol diesel yes okay. so it would be better you read this charging section point okay आज में तो नहीं लगेगा डन सो लेट्स सी व्हाट सेस इट सेस सेक्शन 9 इज द चार्जिंग प्रोविजंस ऑफ द सीजीएसटी एक्ट इट प्रोवाइड्स दैट ऑल इंटरस्टेट सप्लायर्स वुड बी लायबल टू सीजीएसटी द लेवी इज इन सप्लाई ऑफ ऑल गुड्स और सर्विसेज और बोथ एक्सेप्ट इन सप्लाई ऑफ अल्कोहलिक लिकर फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पशन under the gst law the levy of tax is as follows in the hands of supplier on supply of goods and services referred to a tax under forward charge mechanism in the hands of recipient on receipt of goods and services referred to as reverse charge so what gst ka funda kya hai in gst tax is collected from the customer but the owner of the of the payment is on the supplier ये नॉर्मल केसेस में होता है फॉरवर्ड चार्ज बेसिस में ऑन सर्टेन सर्विसेज टैक्स द लायबिलिटी फॉर द पेमेंट ऑफ द टैक्स और द लेवी ऑफ द टैक्स इट फॉल्स इन द हैंड्स ऑफ द रेसिपिएंट जब गुड्स रिसीव करता है सपोज ए इज सेंडिंग गुड्स टू बी बी रिसीव्स इट बट इट इज बी ओनली हु हैज टू पे द टैक्स आल्सो नॉर्मल केसेस में बी डज नॉट हैव टू pay the tax to the government he it is just included in the price of the goods a collects the tax from b and then a pays it to government but in reverse charge basis b has in b ultimately b is paying the tax but he has to also pay it to the government also so a ka kuch owners nahi hai a ko kuch nahi karna hai b will pay the tax to the government in case of reverse charge basis now what are the cases of reverse charge basis and detail iske bare mein hum log baad mein बात के चैप्टर्स में कवर करेंगे सो इन नॉर्मल कोर्स द टैक्स वुड बी पेबल बाय द सप्लायर ऑफ द गुड्स और सर्विसेज हाउ इन स्पेसिफिक केसेस द ओनर्स ऑफ पेमेंट नाउ देयर आर टू पॉइंट्स हियर फर्स्ट इज द ओनर्स ऑफ द पेमेंट ऑफ द टैक्स टू द गवर्नमेंट एंड वन पॉइंट इज रिगार्डिंग द लायबिलिटी ऑफ द हु हैज द 
who is to bear the cost the owners of bearance of the cost in normal cases the owners of payment of tax to the government is to the supplier whereas the tax is borne by the uh, the recipient of the goods because it's an indirect tax system but when we talk about reverse charge basis the tax is borne by the recipient and the owners of the payment of the tax is also on the recipient so in specific cases in specific cases and like karo and write the here reverse charge based you no know, cases reverse charge cases the owners of payment of tax is shifted to the recipient of the goods or services when goods or services are supplied by a supplier who is unregistered person to a receiver who is registered the liability to pay tax on suppliers will be on the recipient so if supplier is unregistered and your receiver of the goods is a registered person so the liability to pay the tax to government will be on the supplier uh, on the recipient sorry because the recipient is registered so that's a registered person will be required to pay gst on all supplies received by it from unregistered persons this is applicable to both goods or services so a registered person he would be required to pay gst on all supplies which are received by it from unregistered persons and this is applicable to both goods and services okay now aapke left hand side ka page is blank now you will write down there a point to impose tax on reverse charge basis reverse charge may we will talk in details but yahan pe aapko ek point in janna chahiye to impose tax on reverse charge basis the following conditions would be mandatory to impose tax on reverse charge basis the following conditions would be mandatory impose tax on reverse charge basis following conditions would be mandatory notification to be issued by central government notification to be issued by the central government specifying the categories of supply of goods or services notification to be issued by central government specifying the categories specifying the categories of supply of goods and slash or services categories of supply of goods and slash or services and b should it should be notified it should be notified only on the recommendation of the council council meaning just yes, council it should be notified only on the recommendation of the council done okay so next point is supply of more than one goods or services so normally hum log dekhte hain whenever you uh, want to buy something many times you get a set of two items suppose with a pen you get a refill free with a toothpaste you get a brush toothbrush free either free or as a set now this one thing is that the goods can be naturally bundled too so these are basically bundled goods so you go to buy a toothpaste but you have to buy a toothbrush also with that item because they are bundled together now these bundled goods 
they can be either naturally bundled or not naturally bundled. Now, what is naturally bundled? Suppose you get you go on to buy a pen and you get a refill. Now, the both the items they are basically for a particular purpose. They are not very much different from each other. For uh, writing, you require a pen and a refill in it also. Can you write without a refill in a pen? No. You go to buy a car and you have to take insurance of it. Right? You go to buy a mobile phone. You need a battery with it. Without a battery, you cannot uh, use a mobile phone. But suppose you go to buy a pen and you get a soap free with it. Or you get a bundle of a pen and a soap. Now, these are the a pen and a soap, they are not connected to each other by any means. Soap kuch alagi cheez ke liye hai, pen alag cheez ke liye. Also, suppose you go to buy a pen and you get a pouch of a detergent bundled with it. Now, these, are these naturally bundled? They are not naturally bundled. So, what happens if the case its supply involves a naturally bundled goods and if they are not naturally bundled? So, if supply involves more than one goods or services which are naturally bundled, now these are referred to as composite supply of goods or services. And or services. Okay. Supply. Cut this. Uh, supply ko cut ho pe or uh, services ko. E galti se pe supply aage. This one. Okay. So these are referred to as composite supply of goods or services. Now in such cases it shall be deemed to be supply of those goods or services which constitutes the principal supply therein. Now when you go to buy a pen and you get a refill free with it. What was your principal intention of buying? The principal intention of buying was the pen and not the refill. If you wanted a refill, you could simply buy a refill. But if you have a bundle goods of a pen and a refill and your principal intention is buying that pen. So in such case, it should be deemed to be supply of a pen and not that of the refill. With a this is a pencil ka set lete ho. With that you get a eraser also and a sharpener. Now your principal intention is what? What? Of getting the sharpener and the eraser or that of the uh, bunch of pencils? Your principal intention was to buy that pencil and not that sharpener or eraser. So it shall be deemed to be the supply of that bunch of pencils or set of pencils. So when goods, for example, when goods are packed and transported with insurance, the supply of goods, packing materials, transport and insurance is a composite supply. Supply of goods is the principal supply. Now your intention was not to supply the packing materials or transport or insurance was not your intention. Your intention or principal intention was to supply the goods. But when you are supplying the goods, you have to pack the goods. You have to transport it to some other place. You have to get the, the goods in short. So these are all ancillary to the supply of the main, of the main item that is the goods. So these are all ancillary services which you are taking or ancillary goods which are supplying. So supply of goods is the principal supply. This implies that supply will be taxed wholly. This supply will be taxed wholly as supply of goods and not that of provision of insurance services or transportation services or supply of packing materials. So it would be supply of goods only. Is it clear? If supply involves supply of more than one goods or services which are not naturally bundled, these are referred to as mixed supply of goods or services. I have merged it with naturally bundled and not naturally bundled. Case. So that's easier to understand. So these are referred to as mixed supply of goods and services. So deemed to be supply of that good which is liable to tax at the highest rate of GST. So suppose a pen and pen 
पेन पे बिक रहा है उसके साथ इस बंडल विद अ सोप एंड पेन इज चार्जेबल टू फाइव परसेंट ऑफ जी एस टी एस सोप इज चार्जेबल टू ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑफ जी एस टी सो वॉट विल द रेट ऑन दट बंडल ट्वेल्व परसेंट यस सो इफ टूथ पेस्ट फॉर इंस्टेंस इज चार्जेबल टू ट्वेल्व परसेंट जी एस टी इज बंडल टूगेदर विद सोप चार्जेबल टू एटीन परसेंट ऑफ जी एस टी दिस इज अ मिक्स अप्लाई बिकॉज टूथ पेस्ट एंड सोप आर नॉट फॉर द सेम यूज सॉरी This is a mixed supply, and this will be hence be charged like eighteen percent, being higher of twelve and eighteen percent. So, anything you want to ask? Yes, last. No, alag ka baat nahi ho raha. This is bundled. We are talking about bundled goods. Alag to ab le hi sakte hain. Kaun mana kiya? अलग अगर लेंगे तब तो ये इसका प्रोविजन से दिस प्रोविजन विल नॉट अप्लाई तो प्रोविजन को जरूरत क्या होगा तो अलग अगर आप लेते हैं कोई चीज सपोज आप अगर रिफिल अलग लेते हैं तो अलग ही रेट लगेगा उसके ऊपर जो रेट यस ठीक है ओके सो लेट्स सी व्हाट्स नेक्स्ट so if each goods bundle is priced separately separately it then it's neither a composite nor mixed supply just we will have it separately so agar jo pen aur refill hai uska price alag alag diya hua it's bundled together ek hi wrapper ke andar mein hai pen bhi hai pencil bhi hai aur pe pen bhi hai aur refill bhi hai aur piche mein pen ka naam diya hua hai refill ka naam diya hua hai aur total likha hua hai in that case you can impose gst सपोज द पेन कॉस्ट इज ट्वेंटी रुपीज रिफिल इज ऑफ फाइव रुपीज पीछे में हम जैसे जाएंगे पीछे में लिखा हुआ पेन ट्वेंटी रुपीज रिफिल फाइव रुपीज टोटल ट्वेंटी जीएसटी सेपरेटली ऑन बोथ दपोज इन द बंडल इज गिवेन अ पेन एंड रिफिल इज गिवेन एंड प्राइस इज ओनली रिटर्न एज थर्टी रुपीज सो हाउ विल यू डिफ्रेंशियल बिटवीन वट इज द प्राइस ऑफ द पेन एंड दैट ऑफ द रिफिल सो इट गुड्स If each goods bundle is priced separately, underline this point, priced separately, then it is neither composite or mixed supply. GST is to be levied separately, or is to charge separately on each product. दो बार आ चुके levied separately, charge separately. वो एक को काट दीजिए. जीएसटी उस भी चार्ज सेपरेटली ऑन ईच प्रोडक्ट लेवी सेपरेटली को इस पॉइंट को काटिए इस इस दो बार आ चुका है इफ टू और मोर गुड्स आर बंडल टुगेदर दैट आर नॉट नेचुरली बंडल एंड कैन बी सप्लाई सेपरेटली इन द नॉर्मल कोर्स ऑफ बिजनेस इट्स अ मिक्स सप्लाई सो पेन एंड सो इट कैन बी सप्लाई सेपरेटली नॉर्मल कोर्स ऑफ बिजनेस देन इट इज अ मिक्स सप्लाई If one supply is predominant supply for the recipient, then it's a composite supply and it will be treated as supply of the main product. Like supply of mobile phone and charges, the composite uh, supply, composite supply charger, like composite supply, ah, uh, charger ko kati is a composite supply and GST shall be charged. That is, आप लोग का ठीक है. तो मेरा यहीं पे गलती है. वो correction हो गया होगा printing के वक्त. Supply of a mobile phone and a charger is a composite supply, and GST shall be charged at the rate applicable to the mobile phone. So predominant supply is mobile phone. Oh, yeah, just what I said earlier. So this was about the mixed supplies and composite supply. Next point talks about classification of goods or services. Now it's very important to classify the goods or services. Why? और एप्लीकेशन तो रेट हमारे यहाँ पे पांच परसेंट का भी स्लैब रेट है बारह परसेंट का है अठारह परसेंट का है ट्वेंटी एट परसेंट का है तो कौन से टैक्स में आप कौन से स्लैब में आप पर्टिकुलर गुड्स या सर्विसेज को डालेंगे इफ यू डोंट नो हाउ टू क्लासिफाई इन विच स्लैब यू हैव विच स्लैब योर गुड्स और योर सर्विस विल फॉल हाउ विल इंक्लूज द टैक्स सो आप बारह आपको लगाना है आप अठारह परसेंट लगाए जा रहे हैं So it's very important to classify the goods or services. So in order to apply a particular rate of tax, underline. In order to apply a particular rate of tax, 
A taxable person needs to determine the classification of his supply as to whether supply constitutes a supply of goods or services. So in order to apply a particular rate of tax, a taxable person needs to determine classification as to whether supply constitutes, uh, supply constitutes a supply of goods or services. It should also be noted that classification of each product supplied has to be made separately if supply of such product is independent. So for each supply, independent supplies, you have to classify each year of your supply independently. Agar wo classify independent so classify kar sakte hai. So agar aap suppose kuch uh, good supply kar rahe hai, uske saath transportation hai, insurance le rahe hai, so usko aap sab, they all can be independently classified. The supply of the goods can be classified independently. The transportation can be uh, classified independently as a service of transportation. Insurance can be uh, classified independently as a service of insurance. But suppose in goods, one in particular good you are supplying, in that good there are certain raw materials. Certain services have been taken to make that good. Now can you classify that? So in that case the goods will be classified as a, sim as a single product, that particular good. Suppose you are making iron rods and you are supplying iron rods. In making that iron rod, you require raw material, you require services from various parties. So you cannot classify that. You have to classify the iron rod as an iron rod only. But for transporting that iron rod, you require transportation charges, you have to take insurance. These are all different services and can be classified differently. So in that case, for one would be supply of goods being the iron rod. Supply of service being the transportation if you are transporting that on your behalf. And what is if you are taking insurance that is being the supply of insurance service also. So classification of each product supplied has to be made separately if supply of such product is independent. This shall include all byproducts and scraps. So if there are any byproducts and scraps, if you can identify them separately, it would be classified also separately. Now, ab aap log, from this point, you will read. Kitna samaj mein aaya, aaya nahi aaya, fir tumhe nahi. Lekin first aap log, you have to read this. Kitna tak mein highlight kar raha. Point F. Okay. You will read till point F. And then also, you read the power to grant exemption from tax. Okay. So, you if se leke put a power to grant the exemption of tax and then till till effective date of notification. So, you have uh, six minutes exactly. Okay, after that, I will talk about this. So, these are basically the rules for interpretation. How will you, uh, in case of you are not able to? determine under which head that particular good or service will fall. So what are the rules that you have to follow? Okay. Or if you have doubt, you can